All right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead, open those up. We're going to be in the New Testament book of Titus, the book of Titus. We're going to be in chapter 2, and we're going to look at verse 11 through 13. And, uh, you know, I just pray that your love for the Lord and your love for his word are increasing. You know, if we say we love God, we're going to love his word. And I want you to know something. God loves you very much today. He sees you. He's there with you. And here in the book of Titus, chapter 2, Paul is writing this letter to, uh, to his protege, Titus, uh, who's pastoring a church in the city of Crete. Uh, different than Ephesus, Crete was a little tougher, a little rougher, a little more wicked, um, you know, than where Timothy was at in Ephesus. I mean, sin was everywhere, but Crete was a tough town. It was a, a town that set the tone for, for sin. So Titus, you know, really had his work cut out for him. But uh, Paul will address something here. And Paul was big on grace. Remember this, Paul was the apostle of grace. But Paul was interested in what Paul uh, shared about was not a, a greasy grace. It was a real grace. And here we're going to read what does the real grace look like? And then he's going to talk to us about this blessed hope, uh, no matter how hard things are getting. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God, now the word grace in Greek is charis, charis, it's the unearned, undeserved favor of God. A good acronym to remember is God's riches at Christ's expense. That's what it is. It's uh, mercy is God doesn't give us what we deserve. Grace is God gives us what we don't deserve. Uh, mercy is, you know, you deserve a spanking, but dad says, you know what, I'm not going to give you one. Grace is you deserve a spanking and dad gives you a Snickers bar. You know, that is grace. And God is very gracious. But what is the grace, the real grace that comes from God? For the grace of God that brings salvation, so grace brings salvation, has appeared to all men. So this is available to all. Remember, the same sun that melts the wax hardens the clay. The same grace and love of God appeared to all men. Verse 12, teaching us, so the grace of God teaches us to deny, den that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, so the grace of God will produce in us to deny ungodliness, to deny worldly lusts. We'll begin to realize Jesus is better. Walking with the Lord is better. Denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. That's what the grace of God will produce in us. Verse 13, looking for the blessed hope. What is that blessed hope? It's the rapture. Paul is telling Titus, man, we're waiting for the rapture. We're waiting for the blessed hope. When Jesus comes, oh man, we're almost there, guys. Don't lose heart. Continue to gather. Like Paul says in Hebrews, you know, uh, you know, all the more so as you see the day approaching. We should be gathering together all the more so as we see the Lord's return approaching. And looking for the blessed hope, verse 13, and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we're waiting for the Lord's return. We realize the grace of God. Listen, it's not greasy. It's real. It, it teaches us to deny ungodliness, worldly lusts, right? To live soberly in this present age. The grace of God shows us that Jesus is better, man. So let's enjoy the grace of God today. And it's no coincidence that, that Paul wrote that to Titus, pastor of the church in Crete, where sin was abounding. Because he'll say it to the church in Corinth, where sin abounds. Listen, grace abounds all the more. So may God's grace cover you today. And Father, I pray you would bless your people with more grace, more of your presence. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.